Hello. Today we're going to look at an introduction to G Suite for Education. You may have known it in the past as Google Apps for Education. First thing we're going to take a look at is Google Drive. To access Google Drive, you're going to open a web browser and go to drive.google.com. A couple things we're going to look at inside here are the icons, organization, menu click options, how to create a new, and shared with me. Up first, here are the drive icons. When you open up Google Drive, you'll see in the top right hand a few icons. On the left side, you'll see these icons. Up first, My Drive. This is going to display all the files that you own. Next, if you have the ability, uh, Team Drives is available. It's currently in beta. Uh, but will likely be brought out to more schools later on. This is going to display all the team drives that you have available, that you belong to. We'll talk about those a little bit more later. Next is going to be shared with me. This displays all the files that other people have shared with you. So this will be where you find uh, stuff from students or stuff from other uh, team members if you are using shared with me before team drives came out. Next is Recent. This is going to be all the files that you have recently worked on. Google Photos is a place for you to store all your pictures. If you star a item, it will show up in a starred folder. Think of it as marking something important. And Trash allows you to see anything that has been moved to the trash but has not yet been permanently deleted. Okay, next, the icons in the top right corner. Most likely, if you haven't added a picture, you're going to see your first initial up here. This is your account that you are currently signed into. If you click on here, you are able to switch which user account you are in. The gear is your settings. The I is information account activity. These little squares allow you to toggle the view in Google Drive to either be icons or a list view. This one with the nine squares, some people like to call it the waffle because it kind of looks like a waffle. This is where you can switch between applications. So go back and forth between Gmail, Google Drive, uh, Google Sheets, Google Docs, etc. The little bell, this is where you're going to see your notifications. Okay, when it comes to organization, inside of Google Drive. I want you to treat Google Drive like your internet computer. If you're like me, you might have a lot of icons on your desktop and then you go and clean them up maybe once or twice a year. What's important is you need to do what works for you. I can't give you organization that I do saying that yes, this will work for you. This is all your style, but please use some sort of organization. As you put in more files over time, things get cluttered. So it's very, very important to have a system. Things you can do are list versus icon view, like I talked about in the last slide. Uh, you can set up folders. You can do color coding. And you can add the star. OK, so when you click on an item inside of Google Drive, if you're using a two-button mouse, you can right-click. So you choose an item, you right click on it, you'll see this menu come up. First is the share. If you have something that's completed or maybe um, somebody needed something that you did in the past, you can just hit the share button, type in their Google G Suite for Education user account and send that to them right away. If you get a shareable link, this is going to give you a link that you could put on um, social media. You could send it through email so that they just click and it opens up. Move to is going to be useful if you're going to move something into a different folder for your organization or you can move it into a team drive as well. Adding a star is going to mark it as an important or special. Change color that's going to change the way it's displayed. It's not changing anything on the actual document, slideshow, whatever it is you're working on. This is just changing the color on the title so that you can uh, color code by course or however you see fit. Renaming allows you to 
create your own naming structure for your items. View details is going to allow you to see creation date, revisions, sharing, size, activity. So you can see who worked on the file last and uh, even see when it was originally made, how much space it's taking up. Download allows you to download it locally to the computer you're currently working on. And remove is going to move it to the trash can. The other way you can get to this menu is just click on an item in Drive, then you'll see the three items um, up, the three dots in the top right corner that look like this. And you'll notice they are very similar. The only thing that is different are that the link, sharing, and trash are now icons. So instead of being share, link, and trash, as you see over here, they are now moved to being icons up top. Okay, so in the top left corner, you see a big button that says Create New. When you click on New, here's what pops up. We have a folder, File Upload, Folder Upload, Google Docs, Sheets, Slides, and more. What I'm going to talk about this morning, a new folder is going to be great for organizing. That's something I've been working on a lot over the past few years. File Upload allows you to drag and drop a file, or you can click on File Upload and add it like an attachment as you would email. If you are using the Chrome browser, you can actually do a folder upload, which you can just drag and drop an entire folder. I use that a lot with sharing pictures amongst people. I'll just download all my video, all my pictures into one folder and then drag that folder into a shared folder. Next, we have Google Docs, which is going to be word processing application. Sheets is going to be spreadsheet. Slides is presentation software, and under this more, you'll find a lot more programs that are available to you. One I'm going to highlight later is going to be Forms. Okay, Team Drives. Not all schools have this yet. We signed up for doing the beta to test it out, and so far I am really, really happy with it. Team Drives allows you to have one location for all files shared with a specific group. So you can have your administration, maybe they have all their handbooks and um, stuff that is specific to administration. That can all be shared in one location, easier to get to. Another key thing about it is no individual ownership. This is important because as people come and go from your facilities, if they made something in the past and you delete their account, well, if they were the owner of a specific file you were using, that file disappears. Team Drives takes the ownership from an individual account and associates it with the uh, whole team that's inside of that drive. So if one person leaves, you can delete their account and be all right with not losing your files. This also allows you to clean up your shared with me folder because those can be really, really cluttered if you've had a lot of things shared with you. The shared with me folder is the next option down. Anybody that shares something with you, this is where you're going to find it. Next, Google Docs. I want you to create a new one. So we're going to go ahead and click new, create Google Docs. This is going to be a word processing software. It's in the cloud. So what you make on this computer will show up on your account in any computer you log into. It's really easy to use. You can instantly share it with other people, coworkers or students, whatever uh, you are looking to do with that project. And you have real-time collaboration. So as somebody else is typing, it shows up on your screen. This is really, really handy for things that we've tracked down in the past with, okay, here's my file. I need you to make revisions to it, but you're sending it out to three or four people. And this allows you to all be working on the same file at the same time, seeing each other's revisions so you don't have to track down in your email which was the latest revision or trying to piece them all together. It also allows you to add comments. The toolbar you will see is like you would in pretty much any other word processing software. You have all your standard tools. I'm not going to spend too much time on this because if you've used Word or Pages or any other word processing program, you're going to be able to pick this up and go with it pretty quickly. Uh, the things I think are very useful in class, let's say a student's working on a paper for you and they share it, well, you can use, um, you can highlight a spot on there, then click this button, and that's going to let you add comments. So you can maybe put, you know, rework this sentence, or uh, I think you're 
saying the same thing multiple times in the same paragraph. Another thing you can do is highlight the text so you can identify where there's grammar or typo issue. And the great thing is that there's no more need to print, no more kids saying, oh, my printer ran out of ink or anything like that, or I left it at home in my locker. Here it is. It's always online. Uh, Google says that they have a 99.9% .9 uptime. So as long as you have connection to the internet, you can get to those files. Next, I want to take a look at Google Forms. I really think people should use this to replace worksheets in their class. If you are in a one-to-one -one classroom, whether it's on a tablet or a laptop, if you make a Google Form, you always have it for the next year. You don't have to worry about running down to the copy machine to make your copies of it, and it eases up that big pile on your desk as well. Here at the beginning of this school year, the 16-17 school year, Google Forms added an auto grade feature that we're going to take a look about. Uh, it's a great option for collecting information as well as doing formative assessment. Okay, what's what? After you've created a new Google Form, you'll see something like this. Right here is going to be your title. When you start typing in here, this is your title. This usually automatically fills in with whatever you've put in here. So you can change that later if you want those to be different. So you could put that this is a social studies worksheet or ancient Egypt worksheet and give a little description of it down here. This is where you're going to add your questions. You can duplicate questions, you can trash it, you can make them required so students cannot submit until they have answered a specific question. So here is going to be your question. Here is going to be the answers that are available. And over here we have to add a new question. We click this plus sign. Add a title description. We can push these two T's. You can add in a picture, add a YouTube video, or section break. Section break is great if you have um, specific ways you want it to go. So if the student answers this question this way, have it take them to this section instead. It also helps break it up if you have, let's say, 10 questions. Maybe you only want three questions per page. It's just easier than having to scroll through a whole bunch. Uh, so play around with it. Find what you like. There's really no wrong answers here. Okay, the different question types you can use inside of Google Forms. First, we have short answer. This is going to be a one-word short statement, fill in the blank, those types of questions. Next, we have paragraph for essays or extended responses. Multiple choice allows you to choose one answer from what is given. Check boxes is going to be like your check all that apply questions. Drop down is a cleaner version of multiple choice, so if you have 10 things to choose from, drop down is only going to display one line instead of displaying all of them like you would in multiple choice, so it cleans up your view. So they'll just click on the button, it'll drop down, and they select which one they want. File upload allows students to upload a file from Drive to turn in. Linear scale is going to be the classic question of, on a scale of 1 to 5, how do you feel about such and such? Multiple choice grid is the same type of idea, only it gives you X and Y. Date allows the student to pick a date from a calendar, and time allows them to pick a time. The auto grade feature. Okay, what we're going to do to get to auto grade is we're going to click on the settings icon, the little gear up in the top right corner. It's going to bring up this pop-up. The important parts of this window that comes up, if you check this box, it's going to force students to log into their G Suite account. So it's going to collect their email address that they're answering from. You can restrict it to the domain that you are using specifically. You can limit to one response. You can also have the option to let students uh, change the answers after submitting or see what other people have answered. That's all going to come down to your style of assessment and what you are comfortable with letting the students do. Presentation settings, the middle tab. We have show progress bar. If you're doing multiple section breaks, at the very bottom it's going to tell the students if they're 20% complete or 75% complete, so on and so forth. 
Shuffle question order is great for questions if you're worried about wandering eyes. Show link to submit another response. You can check that if you want the students to submit again. And the confirmation, this is going to be a pop-up after the students hit submit. This is what the box is going to say to them. So after you do all your settings in there, you can hit save. Now let's go take a look at what the quizzes feature says. If you want to turn it into a quiz, you need to hit this switch. Once you do that, you'll see these open up for you to make your selections. First, we have release grade immediately after each submission. So after a student submits it, they get to see what their grade was. Or you can have it turned on after manual review. So you can go back and look at it as a teacher. Maybe you have the questions that are um, short answer or extended response, stuff that you have to grade with your rubric. Uh, this will allow the student to see their grade after you've graded everything. Now these are up to you. What do you want the student to see after they have finished the quiz? Do you want them to see which questions they've missed? Do you want them to see the correct answers? And do you want them to see how many points each was worth? Same thing again once you're finished with these. Make sure you click Save. Alright, Answer Key. After you've turned it into a quiz, on each question you make, you will now see a little spot at the bottom that says answer key. If you click on that, this is what you are going to have come up. So this is a multiple choice question example here. So I just have question one and I highlighted the correct answer here. So you can tell how many points you want this question to be worth and then you go through and you select which one of the answers you want to be correct. You can also add answer feedback uh, the correct grading is only going to be on multiple choice checkboxes in drop-down. All the other ones you'll have to grade yourself, just like many other programs out there. But on every question type you post, you can do this add answer feedback. This is incredible for reaching out to those students that need a little bit more help. Whether they got it right or wrong, you can add this feedback to maybe what page number it was on in the book, or a useful YouTube link if they need to revisit the information and look it over again. It's a powerful option for you that you don't really have with your printed worksheets. Okay, to view responses. If you notice in your form, you're under questions. If you click on responses, this is going to pop up. So there doesn't look like there's a whole, whole lot going on here, but there actually is. First, if you click on these three dots, you have a few different responses or a few different options you can go with. First is get email notifications for new responses. This way every time somebody responds you get an email immediately or daily however you want it to be set up to let you know that somebody else has put something in there so you can go back and look. You can select response destination. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. You can download responses and delete all responses. Since I don't have any in here, see zero responses, I can't really print or delete anything. Next is this little, this is the Google Sheets icon. So if you wanted to create a spreadsheet, this is typically what I do for every form that I make. It just organizes everything better for you to go back and look at a quick glance and see what people have said. So you can create a new spreadsheet, it will usually pull whatever the title of your form is and then put responses at it. Or if you have an existing spreadsheet, you can link it to that as well. Okay, in my face-to-face, -face, what I would be doing now is working on a group project to do a little hands-on activity. But for this, I'm going to go ahead and cut it off now. I hope you learned something today. Have a good one.